In today's episode of our photography review show, we're going to be reviewing 37 photographers. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our photography review show. Now I hope you had a great week and I hope you're ready for another set of full photography reviews. For those who don't know me, my name is Jacob Bors. I'm a professional photographer based in West Sussex in England. And for the last two or three years, I've been reviewing photos for my friends and colleagues and it's been very successful. So we decided that we're going to offer this to our uh, friends and to our photographic community here at Clever Photographer. Now, it's been working very well and we've been getting more and more photos from more and more photographers. And this is the reason why we have to limit the entries and we're always going to look at one or two of your best photos and review them. That's also the same reason why we have to take the show and divide it between three parts. We usually look at the landscape photographers first, then we look at the mixed team photographers and we end up by looking at the rest of the photography themes you send us. So it's going to be lots of fun, but before that I wanted to remind you that we also have a Clever Photographer Academy, brand new Facebook group where people who like photography join and meet there. What we do is during the week we look at your photos, we give you more feedback, we run a regular photography competition, we answer your photography questions and we just have a lot of fun and we work on different photography subjects and it's really worth to uh, join us. So make sure you head to the Facebook, search for Clever Photography Academy and join us. It's already 200 of us and the group just keep growing. Now we don't want to take any more of your time so let's jump straight into it and let's, let's start by reviewing your photos. I hope you're ready because in this first part we're going to be looking at 22 landscape photographers. So we have a lot of work so let's get straight into it. The first photographer is called Caroline. Caroline let's open the photos and let's start by first impression. First of all this one I absolutely love. It's a stunning stunning scene. I love the green hills. I, I love the mountains at the back. Very very nice. The second one also very very nice. Superb reflection. Nice cropping. Um, lovely colors. I love the details in the fog and everything. Really, really nice captures. So let's get straight into it, Caroline. Um, so uh, if we jump here, uh, let's start by a technical part of the photos. Uh, they nice and sharp. I like the light. Same here. I like the fact that you have a obviously um, texture in the sky. So the exposure is quite good. The sharpness is quite good. The light is well as well. Obviously. It could be even nicer if it would be during golden hour or sunset, but it's still a lovely photo. They are both lovely captures and I really like them from the technical point of view. Nothing I could actually add to them. Now, moving on the composition, again, I am a huge fan of reflection. So for me, uh, this picture worked very, very well. I think it's a little bit tighter on the side. Uh, I think for a picture like this and such a nice reflection, I would like it a little bit more panoramatic. Uh, but then again, from pictures I saw, sometimes you like this square crop and uh, I understand everybody has a certain signature and nothing there is nothing really that wrong with it. Now, when it comes to reflection, I equally like when uh, the reflection is actually uh, in the middle of the photo. Uh, the horizon is kind of in the middle because I think it makes really nice balance when it comes to composition. And I think it works very, very well. So Caroline, well done on this one. On this one, when it comes to composition, it's absolutely stunning. There is actually a small leading line with the grass. Um, there is kind of foreground, which is created by these little hills. And then the middle ground works as well. And the mountain and the black uh, work very, very well. I like the cropping on this one a little bit more, although I think uh, probably even tighter crop would work very well as well. Something almost panoramatic, like maybe... Um, this 16 on 9, let's have a look. It also looks great, you see. Sometimes you need to go even a little bit tighter and you still get a lovely result. So uh, this could be another way of how to approach the composition. But uh, um, artistically, I really like them. Again, you could be there at different time of the day, but we both know that it's not always possible. And still, uh, it's a lovely photo, just like the first one. From the uh, post-processing, nothing I can add to it here. It has a lovely natural colors. This one is more on a green side. Let's have a look if we would go to auto, what it would show us. I think maybe slight touch of tint helps to make the colors a little bit more natural. Let me show you before and after. 
Um, you can see how on the origin of photo, it has that kind of green tint, which is leaking slightly into the actual mountains, which is a little bit of shame. So sometimes it's quite good to go into the white balance, check the auto and see what it offers and see if maybe that wouldn't be helpful to make the decision to the white balance. I think the rest is fine. You kept the texture in the sky. Uh, the shadows are nice. The highlights are well done. The contrast is great. And there is not much I would add here. Oh, obviously, you could create some kind of mask and maybe close the picture more. Maybe you could add a vignette just uh, even more so to add more focus inside of the photo. Uh, similar here. But in overall, Caroline, I love the photos. I think you've done super well. Thank you for sending them to us. And we hope to see more in the future. Well, well done. I don't have much to add to it. Now, moving on the next photographer, we have a Cho San Jung who sent us one photo. And uh, let's have a look at it. So it's basically a lady walking through um, some kind of old market or maybe a temple. And then there is other there are other photos and other people around. When it comes to the first impression, uh, it's interesting. I think anytime you're using this kind of frame composition, it's really important that you take your time and stop your camera right so it works. So I think you want the whole frame to be there. It has a very nice colors. It has an interesting um, kind of processing uh, and it's an interesting scene. Uh, so let's jump to it when it comes to your technical skills. So all these parts are well in sharp. Then for some reason down here, you kind of losing the sharpness at this part of the photo. And then you're getting lots of sharpness inside on the actual people all the way through. There is there are some kind of um, fragments here, which I'm not sure where they really come from. I think maybe I'm not sure if it's a little bit of Photoshop leaking from somewhere or so on. But uh, this is the reason why the picture is a little bit confusing. Again, similarly here, there are some parts which uh, probably been kind of worked with and it wasn't really finished. So uh, technically, I think the sharpness here and then inside, it's just a little bit confusing what the scene was supposed to be. I'm not 100% sure there. When it comes to composition, something I already mentioned in the first impression. Again, I'm a huge fan of the frame composition. Um, it's something which is called frame in frame. And I think it can uh, really work very well when it's done properly. And if you're using it, you want to make sure that the whole frame is inside of your frame or inside of your photo, because then it works much better. Now, uh, obviously from the composition wise, there's nothing wrong with the lady walking, but I think this would look even more better if there would be no people, but still, uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good try. Uh, what probably kind of, uh, strike me more is the post-processing. Again, there is some kind of artifact, which not really supposed to be there. Um, there are some other parts leaking here and you really need to have a look at uh, the original photo and see if you can clean it up before you can send it over. And overall, thank you very much for sending your photo. Uh, I hope to see more of them in the future and uh, take care. I hope to uh, speak to you and see you soon. Moving on to the next photographer, CT. CT, uh, let's have a look what we have here. We have uh, two photos. Um, let's talk about the first impression here. So this is like a tree with the moons and um, some birds, and then there is a photographer, and then there is a person with the umbrella there. I think there is way too much happening on the picture. I think if there would be just the tree and you would work a little bit on your white balance, it would be better. I think on this one, um, it's interesting idea. I'm not sure hundred percent what is it supposed to be, if you're supposed to be touching the mountain or what you're supposed to do. But then there is again, moon or planet, there is an eagle and there's just lots happening, uh, a big blur at the back. Let's have a look if we have information on the camera. We don't, so just something to look at. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the technical part of the picture. So um, obviously the tree is all sharp. I think your balance is a little bit off and it's something which could be easily uh, fixed inside the uh, Lightroom or Photoshop. Again, looking at uh, these kind of like a photographer here and the person here with the reflection, not really standing on anything. If I go even closer, it looks like he's standing in the air. And then there is the moon and the birds. And again, I just think there is lots happening. Photographically, I think you have your thing sharp, but then there is no texture. Um, it must be sometimes during the day because there are really strong shadows here. On this one, I quite like the sky. I have no problem with it. Um, oh, I am not sure about the moon. The eagle could work, but 
again, not 100% sure. And then the person, I'm not sure if you're supposed to touch the thing. Uh, again, everything here in the foreground is sharp. And then there is this heavy, heavy blur. So I'm not sure if it was there or if you were somewhere else and then you add it. It's just a little bit tricky for me to tell you. Uh, composition wise, again, this is way too busy. I think if there will be just the tree and let's say a big moon, it could work. If there were just the tree and maybe just the birds, it could work. But uh, try to stick with maybe one or two elements to start with. Don't go for everything. I think quite often when we get new tools like overlays and brushes and other stuff, we kind of go over the top and that's maybe something would happen here. So uh, CG, um, good try, but I think simple and less is sometimes better. From post-processing, I think the white balance is way over here. It's way too blue. It's not really matching the aspects. On this one, I don't think there is much really wrong with it, uh, other than this like heavy blur around the mountain. Um, and I mean, if you're trying to touch the mountain, I would assume you would want it there. So it kind of look like it's touching. Um, and that's pretty much it. Anyway, send us more photos so we can kind of understand the style and what you're trying to do. If you're not 100% sure, join us at our new uh, photography group. It's called Clever Photographer Academy. We are still open for new members and maybe you can learn and move there and get some feedback there. Moving on to the next photographer, Doug. Doug Stratton. Let's have a look at your photo here. Uh, Doug actually sent us a um, raw file and then the edited file. So this is after. This is before with all the cars. I actually been on this spot several times down there as well on the car park. Yeah, Doug, you um, deserve uh, bonus points just for the fact that you climb up there in this weather. Uh, let's have a look at the after. I think, uh, again, I already reviewed this picture in our group. I think it's stunning. I think the panorama is great. It's well cleaned. I love the glow. I love the leading line with the actual uh, with the road, I think it works super well. Technically, I think it's also well taken. I think for picture like this, you want the sharpness all the way through and you want to make sure that it really works. Another thing which is not easy is to capture the clouds and the mist to make sure that there is some kind of texture in them. I think quite often it's either just like this bulb of white or is way overexposed. So well done on that as well. I quite like the colors. The light is quite interesting. Obviously, this is a space where you would have to visit it several, several times, and then you can get some crazy, even crazier light there. But still, for your first trip there, uh, I think you've done incredibly well. I like that you take, took away the cars because it makes the whole scene much simpler. And I think uh, that's the way we associate the area with the kind of wilderness rather than being in this heavy tourist spot. To be honest, I've been there several times and there were double the cars. So you've been still quite lucky. Maybe the COVID is still keeping the masses away. In either way, it's a stunning picture. I think post-processing is great. The white balance is brilliant um, and um, well, well done. Um, send us more of the pictures so we can do more of the review. And I know you do anyway inside of the group. So thank you again. Moving on, Evgeny. Evgeny sent us two pictures and this week he is focusing on kind of cityscape and interior. And this is like a night shot. So when it comes to the first impression, I quite like the first picture. Uh, I like the nice glow. It's almost like a Las Vegas feel. It's very, very nice. I think it's a shame that you kind of missing the bottoms of the cars. I think that would work quite well. And I would uh, keep an eye on the artifacts you get, you get out of the lampposts. So, you know, you're getting a nice start effect, but you're on the edge of getting uh, kind of lens flares. And sometimes it can get a little bit uh, overwhelming. You get a kind of um, heavy colorization there and so on. So that's just something to look at. This is very nice as well. Although I think the cropping could be better. I think when you take, when you have such a strong element in the foreground, you want to make sure that the whole thing is there, at least here on the side. Um, but let's talk about it. So let's talk about the technical part of the photos. So let's have a look at this one. Uh, quite nice blur, although it would be better if it would be even bigger. I think let's have a look at the information. This was one sixth of the second ISO 800. 18 millimeters. So I wonder if you had it, uh, if you had the tripod and you should, you probably had because this must be late. Um, again, the glow is nicely captured. The neon in the night works very, very well. And so technically, um, you had 
F8. If you would have a go higher with the F-stop, you would get a little bit more of the star effect on the line posts. Uh, but then again, you would have to underexpose the photo to make sure that you don't get these kind of glares, which you can uh, see mostly here. I think when it comes to nice photography, it's a noise you need to keep an eye on. As low ISO as possible. And you want to look at your f-stop and decide what you want to do really there um, to make sure that you either get the effect or you don't get. And then it comes to the movement movement of the people and the cars. And that's where you really need to kind of work with the whole camera. And it can be quite tricky. Either way, um, I quite like this one. Technically, it's well... Uh, it's well captured. Again, it's a shame that we don't see the cars, but that's it. On this one, um, technically, I think it's well taken. Let's have a look if we can just get a little bit. Um, I think it's nice. What I would be maybe looking for to make sure that the lines are a little bit more straight and that can be done easily in a post-processing. Um, I would maybe also wait until all the people pass. Uh, when you're shooting interior like this, you want to showcase just the interior. Also, these kind of passage uh, corridor buildings works also really well when you're taking them straight forward, when you create really nice balance composition, uh, looking straight on rather than from the ankle. And that way you would also avoid looking at this point here. Again, uh, if you have such a strong from foreground element, you want to make sure that it's all there. Uh, when it comes to composition, same thing. I was talking about this. Uh, again, you would want to make sure that you have a straight lines. And personally, I would wait for these people to leave. Uh, from here, I would make sure that I have the cars included because you're cropping probably your kind of, it's like your foreground element. Uh, it's no problem that they are blurry because obviously it's a night nice scene. I think it would look quite cool. Uh, I would just keep them inside of the frame. The rest of it is quite nice. Uh, I really like the night neon. It's almost like Las Vegas. Nothing wrong about that. Moving on the post-processing. So let's have a look if we can just straighten it up this one a little bit. Um, just a touch, so there is not much there, and I would do different crop. The rest, I think, is actually very nicely edited. It's very natural, and um, I really like the glow, which can be even even more pushed by lowering the clarity and maybe a little bit contrast, and that's it. On this one, uh, definitely we need to straight it up. Uh, let's have a look. Geometry and auto, and you need to go for something like this, so then you have all of your sides straighten. And then I think it's a shame for this one. I wonder if you could actually pick it off completely. Bring something like this. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then you could just lower the exposure a little bit and uh, pa -pa -pa -pa, look at the white balance to see and to bring it to not that much yellow, maybe something like this. A little bit of the vibrance, bring down the clarity, and yeah, something like this. You see, so once you lose that, um, let me show you. Once you lose that distracting foreground element, it's a lovely photo, and I quite like it. Something like this. So again, foreground element, keep an eye on your edges to make sure that you don't cutting the visible important stuff. And when you're shooting something like this, just take your moment and wait until the people leave. Now that doesn't go for the street. The street is associated with people. There is nothing wrong about this. On this one, I would wait. Either way, Evgeny, thank you so much for sending your photos over. And I can't wait to see you again in the group. Moving on, we have a Gonzalo. Gonzalo, we have a two photos from you. I know you send us more of them. But again, uh, as I was mentioning, um, we are only able to go through one or two of them as uh, we have uh, many photographers coming to us for the reviews now. So these are the two pictures I choose and these are the two pictures I like the most. I think this one is absolutely stunning with the clouds or with the fog and then the mountains coming out from them. It's a lovely atmospheric scene with lots of drama. It works super well. On this one, almost kind of long exposure, um, nice smooth water with 20 second uh, exposure and then a really nice leading line and the sharpness on the stone really like that so let's talk about the technical point of view i really like the fact that you have a sharpness on your mountain i like how you get the texture in your clouds and in your fog and in the sky i think that works very very well um so technically this one is well taken i think i like the exposure i like the light and i think it's very very interesting Talking about this one, um, so you went for the kind of really, really long exposure, 20 seconds. 
Uh, I like that you're still getting some kind of texture on the water. I think it's very nice. I think it's really easy with uh, moving it to black and white and working with long exposure like this is there is a point when you push it too much and the water is starting to look like it's like a dirty it's like a mess and i think you've done extremely well here what helps is the foreground which is nice and sharp and then you have these kind of pores which are again sharp and well captured so gonzalo well done on that one uh when it comes to composition i think this one works super well uh as you can see when we look at the Rule of third, I think you have it all positioned very well. It's working great. And on this one, I like the fact that the leading line is leading you towards the kind of rule of third and towards the end. The only thing is I don't like is that there is a really small amount of the horizon. I would like it a little bit more. I think generally the rule is that you should have a two thirds of the water uh, uh, and then you should have one third of a sky or another element and I think it would really help here I know what sometimes it's not easy but I think it would just be a little bit nicer either way Gonzalo when it comes to post-processing I see a lots of lots of sensors, sensors here and it's something what can be really easily taken care of you know just a um, few clicks a little bit of time and I think that would help your photo hugely you can see lots of the noise all over the picture. Um, and if you want to see how it can be done in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, there is a little video we have on this channel. I will put it on your screen and you can just check it out and take care of this because I think it's a shame that it's a stunning photo like this and it has a distractions like this. So it's usually it's because you're using quite high f-stop, which in your case is true. You're using f22 and it's just something you need to keep an eye on to keep your photo nice and clean. Moving on this picture, um, when it comes to post-processing, I think it's very well done. You know, I really like the black and white. Um, I have nothing much to add here, Gonzalo. So well done. Either way, thank you so much for sending us your photos. They are lovely. We hope to see more of them in the future. And if you have a time, make sure you to head to our Facebook group, Clever Photographer Academy, and join us there. Moving on to the next photographer, we have a Hadari Nissan. Hadari, again, you sent us lots of photos. Uh, some of them I already reviewed, so I thought I picked two which are kind of interesting and which I like. I think this one has a big potential. I really like the composition of the kind of zigzag streets up. And then I thought that this one is also really interesting. I'm assuming it's some kind of boat and a person working on it. I think it's a lovely, lovely capture. And we are going to review two of those photos. So uh, let's talk about the technical point of view. I think uh, you get a sharpness in a kind of foreground right here. And then you losing a little bit of the sharpness all the way through. And also you getting lots of lots of noise, uh, especially out here. It's also a little bit blurry. So something to keep an eye on. Now let's have a look at the next photo when it comes to the technical point of view. Um, again, lots of noise and not the best quality of the photo you send us, unfortunately, but um, I quite like it. I think it's really interesting as a composition. Again, you get sharpness on the foreground here and uh, then the whole thing kind of works. So well done on that, Nissan. Uh, moving on to the composition. It's a lovely composition. And actually on this one, there is not much I would add. I think it's very interesting. I would be only interested what would happen if we would take completely away this very kind of foreground and it would be just as interesting. It's just that I found this yellow bit a little bit distracting and I'm not 100% sure it should be there. Quite often we say that if it doesn't have to be there, just leave it out. And I think it's the case for this one. Listen, moving on this one, I think the composition is great. And actually I have nothing I would add to this. I think it really works. It's kind of leading lines and the shapes and the color and the light. I think it's a lovely, lovely photo. When it comes to post-processing, I think this picture comes across very flat. I'm not sure about the white balance. And uh, it could end up something like this. Again, you could also make it black and white. And let's see if we would turn it a little bit and make sure that all the windows and doors are straight. Which you can do easily in a geometry. So something like this. And then we could really push the contrast and bring down the exposure, bring down the clarity, not too much, just something like this, a little bit of texture, and then you could really work with masking and use a brush and it's gonna really work with some of the darker areas to create something like this and something like this. 
here and on the foreground again and then you could add another one and add a little bit of the brighter areas of the photos and create lots of interesting um, contrast and creating something like this then you could just add the vignette and do if we find it right here and again maybe a little bit of the blacks and see if the curve could help us a little bit and here as well and there you go so something interesting like this on this one post processing wise i have not much to add i think it works and well done thank you so much for sending us your photos uh, moving on to the next photographer hannes hannes sent us this absolutely stunning capture of the cathedral and actually um i feel like i've seen this picture before and it's so so beautiful it's like from fairy tale so let's have a look at it when it comes to the technical part of the photo let's have a look um not that close a little bit less closer absolutely stunning detail uh all the way through beautiful lamp glow with a little bit of start effect beautiful colors uh in the sky with a lovely texture uh nice dodge and burn with glow around the actual lamps and uh beautiful beautiful photo so let's have a look if we have any details from the photo obviously captured with sony with your 1635 lens and you were 5.6 uh, f-stop 1 50th of the second shutter speed now um when it comes to composition i really really like it i like everything about it the only thing and that could be just my screen um i'm not sure about this whole part of the picture as uh, it seems to be really dark um and like i was just saying if if uh, it doesn't have to be there if it doesn't add anything to the composition i think maybe it wouldn't have to be there so i wonder just by trying uh, if we would just crop a little bit of it um, it would be just as powerful and uh, still stunningly beautiful but anyway that was just a test i think the photo is beautiful uh composition wise the beautiful cathedral uh, slightly off-centered with the glow created by the lamps i think just really works and of course the sky is beautiful again and it's a beautiful beautiful capture post-processing again spot on great colors great white balance again i would keep an eye on this area here as it's getting across almost too uh, dark or really contrasty but then it works really nicely with the glow of the sunset and a glow of the lamps and i think it just really works so hannes thank you so much for sending us your photo and we would love to see more of them as it's really inspiring and it's lovely to see them moving on the next photographer john lister john you send us two photos uh, so let's have a look at them john we have this landscape photo with the kind of damaged house at the back with the tree in the foreground and then we have this windmills so let's talk about it um first impression i quite like this one although i think i've seen your photos before and it was kind of black and white captures which i think for this one would work super well on this one i'm not 100 percent sure about it first i'm not a huge fan of windmills which is not your problem so uh, it's still nice but there is this huge gradient which is kind of taking away lots of the uh, focus uh, i think um, the picture is a little bit too dark i think it's going on a monotone but um, I'm not 100% sure that it's working. Then the fans are kind of focusing away from the picture, which I think is a shame. So out of the two, John, I prefer this one. So let's have a look at them. Technically, uh, well captured. There is details all the way through. You're using your Nikon. I really like that. There is a lovely texture on the sky. Again, as always, I have to repeat myself. I would prefer it to be during a sunset or sunrise uh, if it could, but it's still lovely. At least you have a nice texture in the sky. On this one, technically, again, there is a uh, lots of detail in the grass in the foreground. There is actually lots of details all the way through on the actual uh, windmills and so on. But um, I'm not sure about the exposure. I think it seems to be really, really dark. There is also like really strong glow on the actual pole. So I'm not 100 percent sure about this one um, talking about composition. Uh, I think the first thing which strikes me on this one is the dark gradient. So it's kind of whole empty space. And the second thing is that the actual windmills are facing away and out of the whole composition, which I think is a little bit of a shame. Talking about this one, uh, it's a lovely composition with the foreground here and the house at the back. 
However, I would crop it a little bit differently. I would probably go for something like this. Just a little bit more simple. Uh, the difference is that there is a lot of extra areas here which just don't have to be there. There's this whole part above which doesn't add anything. And I think there's a little bit at the bit on bottom which doesn't add anything. It's not a leading line. It's not a foreground. Your main subject is the tree and the house and a little bit of the clouds around. So I would crop it differently. But otherwise, I think it works very, very well. On the post-processing, so let's give it a try. So if we crop it the way we were saying, let's do a little panorama, uh, something like this and maybe not that tight, maybe more like this and this. I think it looks really, really nice. Now, obviously, again, as I was saying, we could turn it to black and white and see if that would work. It could be interesting. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but it's just something uh, different to try. Let's bring it back here. Yeah. And here is the beginning. So, uh, John, um, this one I really, really like. I'm not 100% sure about this one. Also the lines and everything. So uh, keep an eye on your landscape. I think you're doing very, very well. And send us more of them. I want to see them in the future. Thank you very much for joining us for this episode. Moving on to the next photographer. We have a John Wilson. John, you send us two photos. So let's have a look at them. John, uh, so we have this kind of canyon or maybe it's a river. I'm not 100% sure. Um, or river, or maybe like a lake in the mountains. Um, it's almost kind of monotone uh, feel. And similarly on this one, it's a kind of mountain rock going up to the sky. My first impression, I really like this one. I think there is something about it. I really like lots of this texture. This one I quite like. It's an epic, epic scene. But as you saw, I already wasn't able to say um, what exactly is it I'm looking at. I, I obviously, I know the rocks and mountain, but I'm not sure what's happening at the bottom. Um, I think the sky uh, is interesting, but I just, I'm, it's just, I think the colors and the light makes it a little bit flat. I think it's such a beautiful scene, but it's just missing some kind of contrast and that can be created by light or maybe by color or anything um, what can add a little bit more depth and contrast to it. Uh, from a technical point of view, it's all sharp, so there is nothing really I could add here. Similarly here, I think the light uh, and exposure is quite good, uh, although um, I think it would be interesting maybe a different time of the day when you will get more colors and more kind of light and contrast from it in, uh, but nothing really much I can add on a technical part. Composition wise, I think it works. Again, there is this element here and here, which I just don't know if it has to be there. I think it could easily take a little bit tighter cropping. Um, just maybe something like this. Um, just to kind of take away of this because it doesn't really add us anything, but it's just an idea. Uh, otherwise, the composition interesting. I think if there would be a little bit more of the sky, it could be also add something interesting to it. I quite like the leading lines here, which guide us through the whole valley. So that works quite well. Um, and that's it. On this one, um, again, similarly, you want to keep an eye on a rule of third and always make sure that maybe one third is kind of showing some sky and some texture and two thirds showing the um, rocks and the mountains. But it's still quite interesting uh, as, again, I really like the texture on this and I like the shape of the mountain there. When it comes to post-processing, I'm not 100% sure about the colors. I think the drama is there created, but I would like it to be a little bit more colorful or maybe even completely black and white, you know, and then you would go for really kind of strong contrast and really play around with the masking and see if that could add something to it, you know, maybe a little bit of exposure on where the exposure has to be. Uh, almost, uh, I would suggest you to look at somebody like Ansel Adams and see if you could get, uh, you know, inspired by him. Either way, it's kind of very interesting and um, it's a very interesting scene. So, uh, John, thank you very much for sending your pictures over. We always love to see them. If you have more, make sure you send them for the next week episode so we can uh, review them for you. Moving on the next photographer, we have a Jürgen Rao. Jürgen, we have uh, two photos from you. Again, I believe that you maybe send us more photos, but as you can see, we have lots of photography to go through. So we are always able to look at only two pictures. So I picked two of those. And uh, from kind of my memory, I think you're doing super well when it comes to mists and 
fogs and special light and again this is very very lovely photo uh, with nice warm sunrise i would assume with the fog coming across the lake with the trees well done on that one this is almost looking like a drone photo but maybe i'm wrong i like everything about it except i would just crop it a little bit differently and again i would make an eye and keep an eye on the horizon to make sure that it's straight so talking about technical point uh technical part of the photo um it's nice and sharp the light is great, the exposure is great, there's a lovely texture in the sky, nothing to add. Similarly here, I think uh, this is almost like your morning when the light and everything is starting to turn into your day. That's when you're starting to get a little bit more of a contrast here and the sky is trying to starting to turn to this kind of little bit boring blue. But still, it's a lovely, lovely capture and uh, again, it's sharp um, and uh, um, well done on that. Moving on to composition. And I like it, but I don't think it's 100% balanced. Uh, and I think it could be really easily fixed with a little bit more of a cropping. Let's see if I can switch off this and just make sure that maybe the trees are positioned in a similar um, areas. So something like this could maybe help. So then I have the kind of similar space on each side of the photo. Um, let's see if we would maybe push even more the horizon. And that way we would work with one third of the ground, two thirds of the sky. Showing the sky really works here because it's very, very pretty. Uh, another thing you could do, you could actually turn it completely to like a panoramatic capture and then you would have a little bit more space to work with it. So maybe something like this and you're almost getting stunning postcard. So lovely, lovely uh, thing to do with it. On this one, again, I would keep an eye on the horizon. So let's say if we can uh, adjust that to something like this and then definitely crop it away from the square because the sky isn't interesting at all uh, so i would do just something like this and i would bring my focus on the village and on the fog here by maybe using masking and the brush and do some more dodge and burn again human eyes i attracted by brightness and by whiteness so uh, when you add a little bit of uh, dodge and burn, it just kind of uh, take the attention where you want it and it works quite well. So just a little bit of dark areas here and here and it's all good. So Jürgen, thank you very much for sending out your photos. I think they are beautiful. Out of the two, I probably prefer this one because of the warm colors, but both of them are great and we hope to see more of them in the future. Moving to the next photographer, Keith. Chris, we have uh, one photo from you and it's very, very pretty photo. So I'm assuming this is a drone, uh, unless you've been hanging from the helicopter. Uh, and it's a very, very nice capture. I am a huge fan of this kind of drone compositions where you're heading straight on. I think the fact that you are a little bit tilted helps us a little bit more with the scene. So we understand a little bit more what we're looking at. I think if you would be completely above, maybe the lighthouse wouldn't be visible, but I think it works really well. I think the composition is great. And to be honest, Keith, I will not have much to tell you because I think you've done super well. Technically, I think it's well uh, taken. I really like the level of the sharpness, the brightness. I like how you have a details all the way through, not just at the top of the lighthouse, but also all the way at the bottom. Um, I like the light, the exposure, um, and um, again, no noise. Well done on that. Moving on the um, composition, I think it's very interesting. I wonder, uh, let's have a look at the kind of cross. If you could have just actually maybe crop it a little bit more, uh, just like this, again, coming to the same rule. If it doesn't add anything to the composition, it doesn't have to be there, but it's always very personal and very uh, individual what you like and what you don't like. But I still like it a lot. Nothing much I can add to it. Again, I really like what you did with the camera, being able to tilt it a little bit uh, to bring more of the detail and more of the storytelling to the actual viewer of the photo. Now, let's talk about post-processing. Nothing much to add here. I think the post-processing is great. Uh, I think it's a naturally colorful. I love the saturation. I love the sharpness. I love the contrast. All your highlights works really well. Again, there is a really nice kind of vignette going around with the bright side of the Lightroom being on. Lovely, lovely. Keith, thank you so much. And you know what? We would love to see more of your photos. So either send them to us here at the Photography Review Show 
or please come and join us in, on Facebook in our group, Clever Photographer Academy, where we would love to learn more about your drone photography. Moving on to next photographer, we have a Larry. Larry, you have sent us two photos and let's look at them. Larry, two photos. So this one, um, I will, it's tricky because you can really heavily see that there was something done with the sky on it. Um, although you're trying to do the sunset behind, you, you get all of these artifacts around the tree. And I think it's something you really need to look at before you will ask me to review it for you. Uh, take your time, take a look at the picture again, and maybe try to see if something like um, new Photoshop sky replacement tools or your Luminar 4, Luminar AO, AI or Luminar Neo, they could really help you with replacing the sky on this one or trying to avoid these artifacts, which are really visible. Um, I quite like the tree. I think it's very interesting. Uh, there is a little bit of noise on it, but it's nice and sharp. But then everything else is super distracting, Larry. So something to look at and see if you can maybe fix up a little bit uh, the artifacts there and send it over again. I would love to see it. But uh, in the meantime, let's have a look at this picture, which is very, very lovely. So personally, I'm a huge fan of um, reflection. And I think this is stunning reflection with a little bit of blur there, but I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, beautiful, epic uh, mountains here and a really, really nice attempt. Now let's talk about it from a technical point of view. So you have a sharpness all the way. I think it's interesting light, although you're having this you're getting this really strong contrasty shadows here. So I'm wondering at what time of the day did you capture this? Uh, this is showing 1047. I don't think that's possible. So um, it would be interesting to know um, uh, if you could have done a little bit differently, if you could have come at different time of the day to maybe see if you could capture a little bit more details in this area. Also, if you could have actually opened the shadows a little bit more uh, and work with that, but Anyway, let's talk about the technical. We already talking about it. So the sharpness is fine. The light is quite nice. Uh, keep an eye on the snow and the exposure to make sure that it doesn't get overexposed. And uh, otherwise, I think everything is nice. I think the buoy is a nice touch here. Um, again, I think it's a shame for this dark area. Composition, I think the whole picture is tilting a touch. So let's see if we can just fix that. Uh, I think something like this could help us, or maybe in a geometry level. Mm, no. So let's bring it back. I think something like this is better. And I think the cropping could be, could have been done a little bit differently. I think the uh, boy, I understand why you kept it, because it adds a little bit of foreground element, but then because of the darker parts, I think you could go even tighter. Let's see. What would it do if we would do something like this? It would be still interesting. Obviously, um, I still like what you've done with the photo. So well done. Again, the reflection is beautiful and uh, that's it. The talking about post-processing, I think the cropping is something you could try. I think you need to keep an eye on your white balance because it's well on the blue side. It's tricky when it comes to the snow because uh, it can really take the camera off. Uh, so that's where you get this blue tint on your snow. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's have a look if we could just add a little bit of gold and a little bit of tint. So maybe something like this. You could, of course, use the picker. But I think that's what brings us to the warmth like this, just something to keep an eye on. A uh, little bit of dodge and burn maybe also just to see if you could do better. Again, you could kind of just mask the mountains to make sure that you're getting a little bit less of the blue tint on them. Just do it kind of locally while brushing over it to keep it more nice and realistic, something like this. And again, we could do a little bit of dodge and burn uh, on the darker parts, for example, just to add more contrast. This is way too much, but I will lower it in one second. So maybe just something like this. Again, add a little bit of yellow. Mm -hmm. And right here. And just something a little bit interesting. Anyway, Larry, thank you so much for sending us your photos. It was a lot of fun to see them. And I hope to see more of them in the future. Again, have a look at this photo, see what you can do with it and send it over again so we can review it for you. 
Moving on the next photographer, we have a Lawrence. Lawrence, thank you so much for sending us your photo here. And let's have a look at it. This almost looks like uh, Mont Saint Michel, to be honest, to some degree. And then we have the three dogs and the foreground. So let's talk about it. Uh, it's an interesting sky. I feel like I've seen it before. But anyway, you have a lovely texture. You have a little bit of blur and haze on the actual um, uh, church or uh, the monastery. And then there are the dogs, which are a little bit hidden, which I think is a shame. I think the whole picture would work if you would actually be a little bit higher. I think if the dogs would be a little bit higher and you would be a little bit higher and you would see a little bit more of the monastery, the whole picture would work a little bit better. I think these white flowers are nice, but they don't really add anything to it. So I think if, let's say, you would be standing up here and you would really end up with just something like this, it would be much more powerful. That's my opinion. Anyway, let's talk about the technical part. Let's see if we have any details. You use your Canon and... Um, um, Let's look at the sharpness. I think the shame is also that the picture is really, really small. So there is a lot of details lost. You see, when I zoom in, I almost can't see the faces of the dogs. So that's shame. Anytime you send us a photos in the future, make sure that they are high quality so we can see and we can really judge it properly. Uh, again, around the church itself, uh, there are some kind of artifacts, but it's so blurry that you can't see it. Um, uh, there is a nice texture in the sky. So well done on that. Um, and it's an interesting light. Obviously, um, I would myself say that uh, you use some sky replacement, but you, I cannot again judge it based on the quality of the photo. Now, when it comes to composition, again, I think it would be better if you would be a little bit higher, see a little bit more of the monastery and get a little bit cleaner shot of the dogs. I think for the dogs to be a foreground, I think they are a little bit too far and they are a little bit too small. So I would just go a little bit closer and make sure that uh, you capture them there. So that would be what I would do with the composition. Again, you when it comes to composition, you, you always think, when it comes to composition, you always think, uh, if the elements add something to the picture. And uh, for example, these white flowers, as much as they nice, they don't really add anything other than confusion. Also, it's good to remember that when it comes to um, the focus of the viewer uh, and the attention of the viewer, they will always go first for the brightest and whitest part of your photo. And in this case, it would be these white flowers here, and they are definitely not your main message. So just something to think about in a future, Lawrence. But thank you anyway. anyway uh, when it comes to a post processing i think your white balance is slightly off so when you go to the color white balance and auto you see how it kind of adjusted for us i think it's missing a little bit of a contrast so just kind of push it bring down the exposure just a little bit and bring up the tint i think for me just a little bit there and that could be something what i would do with it again i would crop it maybe a little bit on the top because again, it doesn't really add us anything special and maybe a little bit on the bottom. And then you would get something really interesting, the dogs being on the golden point here. Um, and that would be following the kind of composition rules there. Anyway, Lawrence, again, thank you so much. Send us more pictures, pictures in the future as we would love to see them. Moving on, Michael. Michael, thank you very much for sending us your photos. We have a two of them here. And let's talk about them. Let's talk about the first impression on both of them. So first of all, this one absolutely love, love the drama in the sky, love the leading line, love the colors, uh, saturation, totally my type of photography. When it comes to this one, uh, again, good attempt. I'm not sure if the people really tell us any story. You know, when you're including people in a landscape, um, you're always uh, doing it for a reason. I don't know, for example, showing certain size of something, um, showing certain ratios. So let's say you place a person right next to the huge church or huge rock. I think that really works. But when they just walk in and they are half hidden behind some kind of tree and then you have a part tree here, it's just isn't adding anything really to the storytelling of the photo. So out of the two, Absolutely love this one. Just not 100% sure about this one because I think, uh, you know, the problem is once you can capture something like this, so deep, so dramatic, so beautiful, then this just isn't really hitting the same mark. And then that's why you're trying, starting to do the contrast. For example, if I would see this picture first without seeing this one, I would tell you that it's great. Once I know that as a photographer, you cap you're able to capture something like this, um, I know you can do more than this. So technically, I think both of them are well captured. 
Let's have a look if we have any details so you can use in Nikon. And obviously you have these two uh, guys walking behind the tree. Everything is nice and sharp. It's an interesting light. You're shooting at the right time of the day. So well done on that, Michael. Uh, this one, again, uh, everything here is sharp. Sharpness all the way through the road. Um, F10 is a good stop, good F stop to use. Um, 14 millimeters and ISO 125. You know, just keep an eye on it. I think 100 is the way to go, but... Um, 125 will not give you any extra noise into the sky or anything like that other than it has to. Uh, when it comes to composition, if you really want to have these people, I think I would crop out this and again, totally follow the rule of if it doesn't have to be there, if it doesn't give anything extra to my message or to my composition, just don't include it. So I think for this one, definitely tighter crop. Let's see if you can actually add the guys into the golden ratio and see if it does something like this. But I'm just not 100% sure about it. Um, I think I would go for the kind of rule of third where you're using one third is your ground, two thirds is your sky because the sky is interesting enough. On this one, absolutely nothing to add. I think the composition is great. It's a lovely panorama, great contrast um, and stunning sky. So well done for this one. The leading line is great. Again, leading line with the flowers. So much happening at the back with the bright area here. Well, well, well done. Post-processing wise, uh, I think your white balance is well. Nothing really much I would add. I really like your kind of dark uh, theme, uh, green colors. I like your saturation on the back of the natural colors and natural view. Well done on that. Contrast, sharpness, everything is good. Highlights, exposure, brilliant. Michael, thank you so much for sending us your photos. If you have a time, come and join us at Clever Photographer Academy. That's our Facebook group and we a meter with other photographers. We review um, photos throughout the week. We answer photography questions and we run photography competitions. And I'm sure that you could add lots to our group. Michael, thank you. And let's move on to the next photographer, Nikolai. Nikolai, we have uh, two photos from you. And uh, the first one is some kind of forest, like a magical forest. And the second one is stunning, stunning sky above this lake. Now let's talk about them. Uh, first impression. So uh, the forest I really like. I like the colors in the light. I like the kind of leaves. Um, I'm not 100% sure about this foreground, but we'll talk about it in a second. On this one, I love the sky. However, I'm a little bit puzzled by the lack of sharpness in the foreground. I think this all looks really blurry for me here, 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 here. So the reflection is nice. The sky is nice, but there is lots of blurry things happening. And I think it's a huge shame. So Nikolai, um, technically, I think this is well taken. It's an interesting scene, which could be cropped differently, but it's still quite in nice and interesting. There is an interesting light. It has that kind of magical glow and it's quite lovely. On this one, until you start to look at the details, I think it's quite nice, but then you look at the details and I think it's completely, um, um, it's completely blurry. Obviously you were using Olympus. You had your ISO 222 millimeters. F3.5, that could be one of the reasons. I think for the scene like this, you have to minimum start somewhere around 7, 8, 9. I think that's where your lens is at its best. There is nothing heavy to focus on here, nothing to create the depth of field here. So you go for F9, 10, 11. Make sure you focus on these rocks here and then you take your photo. Uh, because obviously, as much as you have a nice sky, when you would print this, it would just look like a mess. Uh, this one good. Moving on the composition, I would have do it a little bit differently. First of all, try to avoid these confusing large uh, foreground elements, which are just going to crop on. It just doesn't really fit there. You have this scene, which is a little bit further away from you. And then suddenly, bam, there is this like really strong foreground. So I would crop it a little bit differently. And I would keep an eye as I think the main subject is this tree here. I think that works really well. So I would do something like this. Um, and see, maybe just something like this. And I think that would be a little bit nicer. I would maybe in a Photoshop try to take away uh, these leaves and it would be a lovely, lovely uh, scene. On this one, I think your horizon is slightly off. Let's have a look. Yep. I think something like this would be better. And then, as I said already, I think these elements are 
uh, blurry, so then it's really difficult. I think when it comes to your composition, I think the fact that you have one third of the water, two thirds of the sky works really, really well, but uh, I think you have to do better next time, Nikolai, on this one. When it comes to post-processing, I would be slightly keeping an eye on the glow and on the kind of softness because it's starting to edge on the fact that you're starting to lose details on this one, but I think it works quite nicely. I would add more contrast to it because you want to create some kind of magical forest Again, you could work with the masking and your brush and then just kind of brush some of the darker areas on the photo by using something like this, this and this. And then you could uh, easily brush in some brightness. Just maybe this, this and this here. Now the... Uh, the cropping I already showed you, and then I would take care of these leaves just to remove them for the same reason. On this one, you know what? Um, one thing you could really do is to remove the actual rocks and see if that would be helpful, if it would actually fix the problem. But I think for the next time, Nikolai, you just have to take it a little bit differently and make sure that you keep everything in focus there. Either way, Nikolai, thank you very much for sending us your photos. Um, I hope to see more of them in the future. Until then, take care. We're moving to the next photographer and we're looking at Paul. So Paul sent us two photos here. Now, Paul, I've seen more of your photos, but again, because of the numbers of the photos and numbers of the photographers, we're not able to go through all of them. However, we'll do our best and we look at two of these pictures. So both of them very, very nice. Uh, we have this uh, building here by the lake with the lovely sky. And then this one with a nice leading line, dramatic sky and the beach. So looking at both of them, technically, uh, this one is a touch blurry. And again, that could be because of the uh, transformation from your RAW to JPEG or when you upload it to the website. However, when I look at the rock here, it's definitely blurry. And then when I look at here, again, it's not sharp. So that's the first thing I would look at when it comes to the technical part. So uh, let's have a look if we have any detail. And I think the main point to start with, I would make sure that your ISO, uh, no, your f-stop is somewhere around 7, 8, 9. For scene like this, where you have so much light, that's the way to go. Next thing, definitely when you're shooting uh, during the day, when you have a blue sky and lots of light, your ISO has to be 100, and that way you avoid the noise in the sky, which you can really see here. And you can really see it on the rocks and on the stone here. And um, it's interesting that you're getting this blur because one 2,500 of a second shouldn't give you any blur at all. So it would be interesting where you were focusing as well. So that's something to just keep an eye on. Where this one, it's much sharper. So again, it's much better. Let's have a look at the details. And he really did much better. You see, you went for your ISO 100, f-stop 7.1, which is perfect. Most lenses, that is the sweet spot when it comes to your um, uh, performance of the lens. 7.1 is a great starting point, and many photographers, many landscape photographers, including me, using this f-stop. So definitely a good choice. And then the camera goes for the one five hundredth of a second, which is great combination. So I think totally take this setting and use it for a picture like this because it would really work there and you would lose the blur, you would lose the noise and it would just really work there. Uh, let's have a look if you use the same lens. Yeah, same lens, uh, same camera. So just something to learn from in a future poll. When we talk about composition, I really like this one. I think this is kind of like a, a foreground with a little bit of leading line and then there is the little building with uh, some kind of nautical signs and then there is a uh, texture in the sky so well well done on that you know it's a, it's it's lovely it's just it would need a little bit more love as always we always suggest to go to these places during the golden hour of sunset but then we know that we all can't be everywhere at the right time so it's just a suggestion and something to maybe think of in the future but otherwise it works very well i quite like the crop i think it's nice how you position this in the kind of golden point i think there's plenty sky and it's really nice interesting and strong message when we talk about this one i think there is maybe a little bit too much of the beach i would crop it a little bit away uh, again, just to maybe get something like this. Then you have this strong leading line, you have the nice beach, you have the little bit of the water, and then you have a lovely sky. So um, 
that's it, Paul. I think this one works also very, very well. So from what I see, you have a really good eye for composition. However, maybe your technical skills, we need to brush them a little bit more uh, to make sure that you come back from your photo shoots with the best pictures possible. Post-processing wise, absolutely nothing to add to this one. Natural colors, natural editing, lovely result. On this one, I'm getting a little bit of green tint. So let's have a look at the color, white balance and I think it doesn't have to be as yellow, but I would maybe help it just a little bit because I think uh, before it looked like this. And I think by adding just a little bit of the yellow, I think it make it just a little bit more interesting and the same with the tint. I think you could add a little bit of vibrance and then you could close the picture a little bit more to add a little bit more interesting parts of it. So you could use the masking and the linear gradient and maybe close it from the top here, which is really easily done here with the exposure and Sam from the bottom by using the gradient and do something like this here just to make it more interesting. Then you could also brush some um, exposure in, not that bright, but just to make it a little bit more interesting. And here as well, and maybe on some of the clouds. And there you have it. Anyway, Paul, thank you so much, so much for sending us your photos. It's always a pleasure to see them. Um, keep an eye on the camera setting and send us more pictures in the future. If you want to learn with us, if you want to join us, make sure you head to our new Facebook photography group, Clever Photographer Academy, and join us there as we do photography reviews throughout the week. We answer photography questions, run photography competitions, and try to learn from each other. Moving on, we have a Paula, Paula man. So we got two pictures, Paula, and let's have a look at them. So Paula, um, first impression, not 100% sure about this one. There is some kind of attempt on a silhouette here, which is really, really on the bottom. And then there is this really high contrasty dramatic sky, which is very nice, turned to black and white. It almost looked like it was inverted. Uh, but I think if you capture something like this, I would just stay away from the um, from the trees and the ground. I don't think it has to be there. You know, you could easily just crop it out and really just have the sky as this would be uh, uh, strong enough. Now, if you want to add some kind of uh, foreground or some kind of ground like a trees or mountains, then always start before you kind of get more comfortable start by using one third of the photo of your ground and then two thirds of your photo the sky or the other way around you can use one third of the photo as your sky and two third of two thirds of your photo your ground so that's just learning for next time where this one is very lovely i love the framing i love the framing frame here and the view to the valley i think it works really really well here i think that uh, this piece of tree didn't need to be there. Uh, and it's something I would personally remove. Uh, it's something what we call confusing strong foreground element. And it's usually kind of trees and lamps and cars and lampposts, which don't really have to be on the photo. And it just creates confusion. And it's like one like this, which just hanging there, where on these, you can clearly see where they're coming from. On this one, I think it just takes away from the composition and the balance. Technically, uh, this one, it's not the greatest quality, I'm afraid, because I see when I zoom in, you see how much of a blur and grain and um, lack of details I get, which I think is a huge shame. And similarly, when I zoom, I don't see much of it here. Shame it's so small, but just I think you use Nikon as a camera, uh, 180th of a second F8. Not much I can see here. I'm really sorry, Paula, but still... Um, Again, as a texture, if you would crop it off, I think it would work quite nicely. Uh, when it comes to this one, let's have a look if we have any settings. We don't in this case, but still, uh, everything here is sharp, sharp all the way. It's very interesting light. It's a lovely saturation. I think the horizon, everything is there. Texture in the sky, so your exposure is well. So Paula, technically, it's well done. Composition-wise, I already talked about this one. Crop the bottom away or keep bigger part of it. On this one, uh, the frame in frame composition, love it. I think it really guides the viewer through. Take what I would maybe even do if you don't want to just uh, remove the tree, I would just crop it a little bit lower, maybe like this. 
and think I think it would work even nicer. Then you get the full kind of uh, um, full view without being distracted. Uh, something to keep an eye on is a sensor dust. Let me show you. Uh, I wonder if we can actually see it here. So you can't see it with the tool. However, I can see a little bit of sensor dust here in this area. So if I click, it's one click thing and I will put the link in the actual video to make sure that you can see it and you can see how it can be really easily removed. Anyway, uh, this is it. I wouldn't do much to it. To be honest, even when it comes to post-processing, I would keep an eye on the sensor dust, have a look at the video to see how it can be easily removed in Lightroom or um, this one again, really contrasty. Out of the two, I prefer this one. This is more my type of photography. I think it's strong. I think you can, you're showing me that you can really capture lovely, lovely photo that you think about what you're doing and it's nice and clean. So Paula, send us more photos in the future. We would love to see them. Until then, take care and hope to hear from you soon. Next photographer, we have a Robert. Robert and two of the pictures from him. Robert, I already, when I was looking at this picture, I feel like I saw this picture before. It's very familiar to me. Let's have a look if we find any of your photo. Robert, Robert, let's search. Robert, Robert. And yes, I did see it before. Just a different, um, I'm assuming it's a different, different sky or maybe different white balance. Robert, Robert, let's have a look. So this one, I wonder if we could bring it here. One second, Robert. If we bring it here and then we can have them next to each other. So we look at them in a second. First of all, let's have a look at this one. Robert, let's talk about it. Um, first impression, everything up to the foreground, I quite like. I think it's very interesting, very dramatic and full on. And this to me is a prime example of something what, uh, you know, we're just writing a guide on 10 things which you shouldn't do when it comes to landscape composition. And one of the biggest thing is either lack of foreground element or confusing, uh, confusing foreground element, confusing uh, strong foreground element, which is something like this. And it's a things which are cropped. It's a thing which are just kind of hanging from the side of the photo. It could be branch, tree, um, lamppost, cars, buildings, people. It's just something what you really have to avoid. So if you want to have this tree as a part of your frame, you want to have it there all the way through. You want to have the branches. You want to have the beginning of the tree for it to really work. Once you start to crop it like this, it just comes across really unnatural. So something to look at. Next thing I see here, I can see the sky replacement and the kind of fragments around. Really keep an eye on this. Sky replacement is something that's going to stay here. I really like it. I think it can help us as a photographers to really, uh, to really um, take our effort when we get to these places and make sure that we capture all these places and go all the way there and the weather doesn't work. So it really helps us to uh, get something out of it. However, I'm also a big uh, believer that the sky replacement then has to be perfect. And you can really see the fragments around the breaches. You can see the part here, which doesn't match the rest of the sky. Again, you can see here at the horizon. So if you're going to do sky replacement, go for it. I think it really helps. And I think it would work here for the picture perfectly. I think you choose the right sky. However, then you really have to make sure that it's done technically well, that the editing is done well. Now, that can be done by masking, blending and selection and layering in Photoshop, or even easier, get your uh, Luminar AI, Luminar Neo, Luminar 4, or Photoshop the sky replacement feature there and use it because that will make your life 100 times easier and really create something special. Sometimes you have to work a little bit there with the masking feature, but you will see it will really take picture like this and push it forward. And even for somebody like me or other professionals, it will not be that easy for us to recognize that there is a sky replacement, not like this. Anyway, moving on the other two pictures. Uh, Robert, uh, so... Uh, I'm not sure why you turn it to the purple because I remember talking about this picture and I quite like it. I think it's quite nice. It's interesting scene. It's very kind of, um, 
uh, it's very atmospheric. I think the building and the stones works really well. I remember saying that the white balance wasn't 100% on here. Um, but other than that, I quite like it. So I'm not sure about the purple really, because it just doesn't fit there. Also, you're getting purple in the door, you're getting purple on the mountains and on the rocks. So I'm not 100% sure about this one, Robert. Technically, I think it's well captured. In fact, they are both well captured. There's lots of details in it. It's an interesting light. Uh, the exposure is well done. Nothing I can add to it. Composition-wise, I think this one is well done. I really like the mountains. I like the building. This one, I already told you about the foreground, so I'm not 100% sure about it. I think if you would have focused as a photographer completely on the valley and just crop it down there, it would work a little bit better. Uh, but then post-processing, uh, definitely keep an eye on your sky replacement and keep an eye on all these fragments and see, um, try to kind of explain why you're turning it to purple where I think this was much more natural result, Robert. So anyway, Robert, send us more pictures. I would love to see them. Um, if you're going to do any adjustments to it, it's not a problem. Just go for more of the natural look. Uh, to make sure that you get the best out of them. And give it a try to the Luminar 4 or Luminar Neo or Luminar AI. Uh, some of these applications have uh, trials, so at least you can see if it's going to help you. You don't have to buy them right away, and it could really push it a little bit more further for you. Moving on to the next photographer, we have a Sabine. Sabine is on a grail or a trail to get the best landscape photos she can. Obviously, we've seen her... Uh, dog photos before she was our photographer of the week and she did extremely well and now we're trying to bring the best out of her landscape photography so Sabine let's talk about it one photo this week which is actually from last week as far as I remember and I really um, it's interesting because recently your compositions are this kind of frame in frames which to be honest is very very strong composition uh, rule and element and a tool and it can work really it can work really well as long as the subject is not too hidden so for example if this branch this branch and this branch wouldn't be there i think it would work a little bit better uh, you're getting big parts of the trees which are not really that interesting and then again the house is tilting a little bit but let's talk about it let's talk about uh, your technical skills let's have a look at the settings uh, there is no settings that's a shame um so you obviously have sharpness on the trees here some of it then there is definitely sharpness on the house so i'm assuming you were focusing on the house i would be interested to know what f-stop you used um it's quite interesting, the light there. Um, nothing much I would add to it. Uh, I think the building is tilting a little bit, so we have a look at it in the we have a look at it in the post-processing. Um, I think there is a texture in the sky, so that's nice. That is the glow, which is almost your signature move, so nothing wrong with it. I think you get a blur here on the top, so something to keep an eye on. But in overall, uh, technically, I think it's quite well done. I would keep an eye on the blur. When you go for composition like this, when it, there is a, such a big depth of field, you want to have everything in focus to start with. You want to come home and being able to work with all the layers and have them all in focus. Now, either you use a larger f-stop, f11, f12, f13, uh, in order to have a sharpness all the way through, or you have to do focus stacking, which is a little bit more, um, a little bit more challenging. Or it's more time consuming, but it's definitely worth it. So you could take one picture where you focus just on the house and one picture where you focus on these bushes and one picture where you focus on the trees here, and then you just blend them together. So that way you keep sharpness all the way through and you don't have to worry about having like a high f-stop and then maybe longer exposure and so on. So just simple spot, uh, focusing, focusing on the house, focusing on the bush, focusing on the tree, maybe even one, two, three, four pictures and there you go anyway uh composition wise i already talked about it in my first impression um i think for it to really really work you would want more of the uh, more of the house this is almost like a scene from the movie you imagine the camera flying through and the tree just kind of disappearing on the side so you're looking at it and you're just thinking where when the trees and the branches gonna just disappear and they don't obviously because it's a uh, it's uh, it's a photo. Um, I think the the building is very very interesting. I really like the buildings you're capturing. So it just needs a little bit of 
more kind of cleaner views. Uh, so that would be just my thing. So go for the frame in frame. That's a lovely composition. Just find the spots where it's a little bit cleaner. When it comes to post-processing, um, I quite like your white balance. I quite like your style. Uh, nothing I could add to it. I would make sure that the building is straight. Let's see if we can just do it in geometry. Where were we down here? Effects, details, got it, geometry. We're gonna go inside of your upright and use auto. And that didn't help us much. So let's see if we can just tilt it in this actually. Yeah, maybe something like this. And again, you could add a kind of stronger vignette. So almost something like this and make sure in masking using a new brush, just gonna add a little bit more exposure to the actual house and maybe even around some of the branches where the light is hitting them here. In overall, lovely, lovely. Sabin, thank you so much. Keep shooting landscape and keep sending it over so we can get there. Either way, you're on the right track. Thank you so much. Moving on to the next photographer, we have a Slavko. And Slavko, actually, this is a picture uh, we used last week for the National Geographic. So let's not talk about that one. Let's talk about this one right here. Slavko, um, this was the special episode for National Geographic. I absolutely love the photo from my memory. Beautiful foreground, middle ground, beautiful sky, great, great capture. And then I look at this one and I was thinking, this is the case of, if I would see this one first, I would be quite happy. I think they are lovely colors. I think definitely we have to fix the horizon to make sure it's straight. But then, but then, when I see what you're able to capture and produce in a picture like this, then I look at this one and I'm thinking, oh, it's like me going to uh, Paris and photographing uh, Eiffel Tower under the sunset and the next day going and it's raining and it's a great sky and I photograph it as well. Um, or midday, just blue. The, when you put two of these pictures together, everybody, everybody will love the sunset behind the Eiffel Tower. So it's similar. You have this stunning photo here with the beautiful colors and then this daylight wrongly tilted photo. Anyway, let's talk about it. Technically, uh, let's have a look if we have any information. And we don't, which is a little bit shame. But uh, there is sharpness in the foreground, sharpness all the way to the rock, which is nice. Then it starts to disappear. Nothing wrong about that. You have a texture in the sky, so the exposure is well done. Uh, so again, well done on that one. Um, uh, I think there is not much of a noise. I think the shame for the quality a little bit because it's just 143 kilobytes for such a panorama, it's difficult for us then to judge it. I mean, look at that. When I zoom a little bit closer, you just get a blur, blur, blur. So it's difficult for us to tell you. When it comes to composition, first, we really have to start by tilting it back to what it should be, which I assume is even more than this. Probably something like this. That looks much more natural and much more right. And by doing that, Obviously, what you're losing is this foreground element here. So that's a shame. Let's see if geometry could help us a little bit, but it seems to be a really off. There you go, yeah, even geometry is like this. Then you would have to probably crop away the stone, which is fine. I mean, you really want to work with what you have. So I would then keep an eye and do something like this, and it could be still interesting. Again, shame that is a low quality, so I can't really show you much more. Post-processing wise, I think it's quite well done. I like the natural edit, I like the colors, I like the texture in the sky. So again, just uh, send us a better quality Slavko so we can tell you more and we can look at more of your photos. Either way, thank you so much. I loved your photo last week, uh, as it was said in the National Geographic, and well done on that one. And the final landscape photographer for this week, we have a Sue, and Sue sent us two pictures. So let's have a look at them. Let's talk about them. First impression, beautiful colors, lovely saturation, uh, lots of noise in the sky, and the houses are tilting a little bit. Nice reflection, although if it would be even more reflecting, it would be a little bit nicer, but still well done. On this one, Great, great frame and frame attempt, uh, but again, huge noise in the windows, huge noise coming to the artifacts in the sky, and again, shame, like we were talking a little bit earlier, I mean, frame and frame composition, huge shame that we're missing the bottom 
of the window. So let's have a look at it technically. Let's have a look if we have some kind of details. ISO 80, um, five millimeters F4, one 1000 of a second. I'm wondering if this is a mobile phone or otherwise I have no idea why you would end up with this much noise all the way through. I don't know. It's a, such a lovely photo, such a lovely saturation, and you get this much noise to the artifact. Uh, what a shame. So technically, uh, there is nothing really that wrong with your setting. I would keep it the ISO always around 100. Five millimeters is super wide, uh, and this is maybe the reason why we're getting these artifacts. Um, F4, for this kind of scene, I would definitely go for F789. Um, again, bright day, blue sky, it would totally take it. No need to go any lower. And then your f-stop, you just adjust based on the exposure. So nothing really uh, to change there. On this one, what you are using? Panasonic again, um, ISO 100, which is great choice. Um, F4 again, uh, especially when you're shooting frame in frame where you want the details all the way through, I'm more keen to go for something like F10, F11. And again, the F, uh, the shutter speed just based on um, what the camera telling you when it comes to brightness. So um, I, I tell you something, Sue, composition wise, great as always. You have a really, really good eye for the picture and for the composition. Technically, it's just not working on those two. And, and the main problem I have with this picture is the noise. It's just a level of a noise. I mean, if you would print this uh, on a bigger picture, like 40 on 50, uh, it, it would be, it just wouldn't look good. It would be so distracting uh, and it would be a huge shame. So I don't know, maybe something to do to look at the equipment and see if you could maybe get something what would not um, uh, create so much noise. When it comes to composition, lovely all the way here. And then it's such a shame that you crop the bottom because when it comes to frame in frame, uh, okay, you could, what you could do is you could actually crop the top. So then would you create more kind of balanced composition? So this would work a little bit better, but if you have the top, you also want to have the bottom. That's all. Otherwise it's a very interesting scene. It's a nice light. There is the ship, the horizon, but there's a nice texture in the sky and the person working, it works very well. It's really like a holiday photo. So great capture. Um, just try them uh, uh, next time, try to make sure that you keep the whole frame or that you just crop the top and that works very well too. Talking about this one, uh, composition wise, I think it needs to be a little bit more straight, which can be done easily in geometry here. That much, but uh, like something like this. Um, I think it's a shame for this part. Again, when it comes to composition and some of the elements, this is your foreground distracting uh, element. Uh, we again, we were writing a blog about some of the most common mistakes, and one of them is not having foreground. The other one is to having major distracting foreground, and it can be lamp post, car, person, building anything what just doesn't belong there or it's just extra. And in this case, if I reset all of this, so let's have a look. Um, it's just there. Uh, so I wish you would have be able to walk a little bit more towards there and just avoid this and just focus on the reflection that would really help to the composition. Um, obviously you could Photoshop it out and all of that, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, also, obviously if we would have faced the buildings a little bit more, get the more of them, it would be nice as well. But then I have no idea how the lake look or where you were able to actually move and so on. Either way, uh, lovely, lovely post-processing, nothing I would add to this. It's a lovely saturation. Um, all the exposure highlights, shadows really work here. So well done on this, uh, this one again, similar thing. Well done. Uh, I would maybe see if I could have a little bit of the details on the window, but it seems there's again lots of noise, so uh, well done on that. Nothing really, let's see, the auto white balance doesn't really give us anything. Either way, so great attempts. Thank you for sending your photos uh, to us again. We always love to see them. We always love to tell you what we think, and we hope to see more of them in the future. In the meantime, take care, and... We hope to see more photos in upcoming episodes. And the same goes for all of you guys. If you have pictures you would like to send us and let us review them for you, make sure you 
head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash review. You can always see the upcoming episodes, usually six, seven episodes in a row. You can find the links when you can upload the photos. You can find the links for the specials and you can have the same fun just like we just did here. Guys, thank you very much. And until next week, keep shooting.